My day-to-day -day job is actually to invent new ways how to protect high-risk areas. That could be, for example, um, oil ga and gas facilities, and it could be as well uh, military facilities and other critical infrastructure uh, installations. Of course, as well, people. We protect um, head of states and other VIPs. In other words, we actually help them sleep more secure at night. However, one um, incident or actually an attack um, to my very own family have changed how I look at technologies as of today. A few years back, I enjoyed the, the modern life, getting up at 4 a.m. to get the transatlantic flight, um, catching a taxi, leaving my girlfriend sleeping behind. Suddenly, a bus um, of an incoming message um, woke me up again. Who the heck is texting me at 4 a.m.? Well, it was actually my girlfriend um, who got a bit confused. I'm tens of kilometers away. Well, actually, someone seems to be at the door. Um, she felt like someone is coming in, in our home, at sitting in a taxi, almost at the airport, actually, thinking, holy crap, what now? Um, how can I help? Turn around, call the police, all too late. Back to the basic. How can I get a burger out of my home? Switch on the light and call the police. Come on. Freaking switch on the light now, please. Well, it took a few very long seconds, I have to say. Then the phone rang, my girlfriend whispering, I think they're gone. <sighs> Indeed. <laughs> so the police arrived, and they shared with her actually that, that she was today actually very lucky. The reason for that, because a similar incident ended up with a woman being assaulted. Not only that, they told her that they're absolutely frustrated and helpless against such crime, against the burglars, because they wear hats to um, um, avoid video re recording and handcuffs gloves against fingerprints. Well, statistic tell us actually this is not an isolated incident. That happens actually 1,000 times a day here in France alone. Well, back at the airport, my mind was racing, as you can imagine. And with a long-haul flight ahead of me, there was plenty of time to think about how I can use technology, which I use in my everyday job, to bloody identify these burglars and stop them from coming back again. Well, three years later, and with the advancement of technology, we can now say the days of unidentified burglars are numbered. Our world is becoming a more and more connected web, as we see over there. And these, this web, actually, with omnipresent sensors, survey all the time your environment, around the couch and outside. With that data, actually, we can do something. You will be surprised how much of the data we, all of us, voluntarily share every day with us. And we will give you, right after, some examples for that as well. One obvious piece in the identification challenge, actually, is um, facial recognition. Using this technology and with Mother Nature, as Mother Nature does it as well, using other technology as snooping um, of mobile phones and readily available data from social networks, we actually have built an app we call the Magic Door, where we actually can show you here right now um, how this technology is working as of today. 
what we see here is uh, our lovely um, software engineers becoming movie stars, um, approaching the entrance of our lab here in Monaco. What's happening there, actually, a, a camera is doing facial recognition and we're scanning for smart devices um, the people in front of the door might have with them. Um, the person on the right-hand side, um, we got a result, face got recognized, um, he's identified as Stefano. Um, as well, we cross-checked that with his mobile phone and smartwatch, which he has with him. Um, they are pre-registered with us. It's his phone and his smartwatch. So it's definitely um, Stefano. However, the gentleman on the left with a rather funny pullover, we don't know him. Facial recognition, mobile phone devices, unknown. However, as he came along with Stefano, we can assume he might be his friend. So what we do, we take the facial data from the unknown person and match that, try to match that at least, with um, the, the friends of Stefano in Facebook, for example, on his social media friends. Now there's a readily available API by Facebook. You just send the facial data in, and if there's a match, you get a name back. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, we got a hit there. Um, this unknown person is actually a friend of Stefano and it's Jonathan. So therefore, both persons were identified and magically the door is open and um, the people can get in. But why are we not going a bit more action, live? Checking out actually what we can learn from you here right now. So for that, actually, we have a device here with us. That's a Wi-Fi dongle, actually, with a PC and a battery. We're sitting in the audience for quite a while. Um, this device was actually scanning all your smartphones here around. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> That's what it was. Just this little device, 50 euros, not more. Readily available for everyone. Well, at this point, you need to know that all your smart devices are called sharing, or maybe better, leaking all the Wi-Fi hotspots names you have ever connected to. So think about at how many hotels, airports, restaurants, offices, and probably as well your own home you have connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Well, there are quite a few hotspots out there. Now, I have here behind me on the screen right away some statistics from you guys here around. Um, the sniffer here picked up 1,100 devices, which could be your mobile phone, your smartwatch, Fitbit, Fitbits, and as well potentially printers and other uh, devices here in the area. Um, these devices actually leaked around 486 hotspots um, you have connected to um, here. Um, in a few minutes, we picked it up. And what you see here, actually, I can show you that's very interesting data. As this is live, I need to check myself, of course. But um, ah, here we go. Here's an FBI 2.4. That's an interesting Wi-Fi, actually. 54 guys of that are sitting here around. Hmm. Interesting, I have to say. Um, OK, maybe I should stop my talk right now. Um, continuing a bit further here, um, we can, of course, look at statistics here. And the statistic will show us, actually, that you've been at quite a few airports. You like a lot of different hotels. And you prefer coffees over um, burgers. This data, though, is giving just you a very small glimpse what's going on. What you need to know here now is that these Wi-Fi names, they exist at several services. I take this Wi-Fi name, actually request a geolocation for it, and an online service will provide me where this hotspot Wi-Fi is anywhere in the world. So suddenly, this becomes very interesting for the security world, because I can dive into, in detail, 
on any of your of you phone owners and actually check out where have you been um, worldwide. So, well, why are we not checking it out immediately? It pops up. What you see here, actually, on the right-hand side, you have actually a map with all the geo-located Wi-Fi hotspots we were able to locate in this uh, short period of time here. Um, clearly, the person we picked up here um, has a preference yeah, for the East Coast, US East Coast, Europe, and actually, actually traveling as well um, to Asia. So someone is already thinking, is that my phone? I see already someone <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, well, we can even go a bit further maybe to give you some more hints. In which hotels have you stayed? Okay, Holiday Inn in Fort Lauderdale. Um, off we go, we go further here around. You clearly have good taste for hotels. That's just out of any question. And that goes on and on and on. Airports, restaurants, etc., etc. And this is only one mobile phone. So, now, that's quite entertaining. From the security point of view, this is gold dust, out of any question. So, there's even more to this, actually, to this data here. I'm just seeing here. Um, you need to know that your private uh, Wi-Fi at home, or your home Wi-Fi, um, normally your internet provider is giving you the, the box with the Wi-Fi, and you can't even change, or don't even, don't even dare to change the Wi-Fi name it has uh, from the provider, the name already there, available. This um, unchanged actually gives us a hint that potentially this Wi-Fi hotspot is a private, potentially a home or office um, uh, Wi-Fi. Now, this person here actually has two uh, private, uh, potentially private um, hotspots. Let's check out the first one. Seems to be somewhere in London. We can easily zoom in. Let's check that out. Where are you living? <laughs> well, here we go. Somewhere around London. Seems to be a nice location, absolutely. Um, not only that, I see here there's actually a second Wi-Fi as well available, and that might be even close to us here. Let's check that out. Ooh, wow. Yes, this is very close to us here. Um, yes, so maybe someone here is jumping right now. Um, one of the um, Wi-Fi hotspots actually we um, spotted that it had the word office in there, in the name, which is another gold dust for us, of course. So we checked it out. We flagged that actually office or Francais Bureau and whatever uh, language. We can click at it. Hmm. Very creative name, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I guess I know where that office is here somewhere around. So with that information, Whoever you are here, sitting around here, don't worry. I don't know your name nor your telephone number. However, imagine this or such information in the hands of the police officer who came that very early morning uh, to help uh, my girlfriend. This would have certainly changed the odds against the burglar. But now, what have you learned here today? Well, first of all, in 2017, your mobile phone is leaking a lot of data. Your face is recognizable, and your friends can be actually identified through your social media account. You will say, well, the burglar will leave his mobile phone at home. We hope he's not part of your social media friends. And in any case, and it's true, this technology, what we show you here today, is not 100% prime time yet. However, what we want to, wanted to show you here is that the combination of the surveillance web 
with omnipresent sensors in your sound system and anywhere else around your couch and out in the public domain. Combined with the powerful AI up here, you actually uh, get really there that you can identify a person. So, that brings us almost to the end here. Now, what does it mean for all of us here? Well, I will look, not lie to you. There's some bad news here. First of all, this smart surveillance will be available for everyone, including Big Brother and the criminals. Laws are always lagging behind technology, and therefore it will be even more important that um, new laws are preserving whatever is left of our privacy. However, there's as well some good news. And the good news is, first of all, the girlfriend I mentioned uh, at the beginning of my story is now, I can happily say, my wife. Thank you. Um, and technology itself, as well as smart surveillance, increased actually the entrance barrier to the burglar business, which ultimately helps us here overall. But the ultimate point I wanted to make is um, smart surveillance is increasing the accountability for all of us. And that means, actually, that we can, all of us, sleep more secure at night. Thank you very much.